Today we are going to discuss and compare <coughs> two things. Consciousness supported intelligence versus intelligence. Consciousness supported intelligence is man's. Intelligence is robots. Okay. How is consciousness supported intelligence or different from pure intelligence? <clears throat> so that is to examine what role that consciousness played in the growth of the civilization. Okay. Okay. Let us look at ape versus man. Ape versus man. Ape, you know, did not create civilization. Still in the forest. Man created civilization. Okay. How did he create? The first point we should realize is that man is not superior to ape on a one-on-one on on one basis. No. Ape and man left alone. Man doesn't have much an advantage in a forest. Okay. Apes ten, man ten. An army. So the advantage created by man is that man could form groups, huge groups. Okay. And groups learn something and that learning is passed on to the next generation. You can call it culture. Tool making passed on. Agriculture passed on. Domestication of animals passed on. Language passed on. So, formation of groups and creation of surplus in terms of culture. It means any man is dying like any ape, but men put together created something outside of themselves in terms of technology. You can call this surplus. So tools, literature, domestication, technology, later cities and later industrial revolution, all are being created as a group effort and being passed on, which means two things. Group effort, next passed on. So if man created this much, if man occupied preeminent position in the world, it is not by being alone, it is by being together and creating culture. By being together, 
his strength is increased and by creating a culture he is making use of all the previous achievements culture is nothing but past present connection and then moving towards the future so man kept on accumulating the products of his learning okay so it means what what does it mean in the end it means man connected past present and later future so it is the connections that play the role okay people may understand for example harari harari says in his book that man achieved superiority not as an individual but as a group he is right and he also tells us that this superiority is due to culture he is right both right but one very important point missing in this is that he attributes all this to cortex superior brain larger brain so he thinks larger brain may grow in possible larger brain may innovation okay he is not wrong but given the context we are discussing that is not really an accurate way of looking at things why is it so for cortex to enable grouping a man should feel oneness with the other a man feels oneness with the other how does he feel this is consciousness robots don't feel so how could group be possible consciousness ape has the consciousness but not supported by bigger cortex and man has bigger cortex plus the consciousness and robot doesn't have the consciousness so a robot can never feel my fellow robot a robot can never say we are being exploited let us fight no there is no sense of weakness in a robot because it doesn't have a sense of meanness it means whatever man created through culture the foundation is meanness which led to weakness which led to culture this is what i am i am saying it means consciousness is the foundation of civilization consciousness alone could not have a dent but cortex alone could not have because this togetherness is made possible through feelings Venus came to be possible from Venus, and Venus plus cortex created culture, accumulation of progress. All these things would not be possible in the case of a robot. That is the point. Is it clear? Next time, let me. this venus also creates us versus them us versus them i want you to understand because like venus venus is also exclusive 
That is the reason why I focused on meals as being exclusive. Meals is confined to the body. Meals has to be confining to the body because meals is a coordination system. If you want to coordinate, then you have to know what to include and what to exclude. So meals has its essential property and exclusiveness. Do you follow? So consciousness, as an as its essential property, has exclusiveness. Meanness does not include other body. Meanness extended becomes Venus, and that leads to us versus them, this group versus that group. You may ask, how did this contribute to civilization? Because us versus them led to fight. Fight. Those who are following a superior technology or superior social organization won and established superior civilization. In more recent years, colonialism is nothing but spread of superior civilization. Like that, superior culture replaced inferior culture. A superior social organization replaced an inferior one. Mostly. We are not saying that this is, this is like that everywhere. It is not like that. But mostly, mankind kept on progressing, kept on progressing, which means how does survival of the fittest operate here? Survival of the fittest is not simply the strength of an individual, not even strength of a group, but strength of a group along with its past, which is culture. So when one culture displaces the other, the superiority of the entire past is a spreading. In a war, the inferior are defeated. That's how it is. So which means conflict as much as ganging up contributed to this growth. Hate as well as love contributed. Hate as well as love animals have, but robots won't have. So this is how Venus led to Venus as as a thing. Okay. And then uh, he man went about creating all kinds of very very advanced ideologies religions Harari takes them as simply some kind of a fiction which led people to come together a story it doesn't seem to be like that what I want to say is that these are the ways by which people got united. People got united through feelings. And did you notice when more people are united, often feelings are taken care of in a more uh, superior way, in a superior way, in a better way. Isn't it so? Take, okay, I'll make it simpler. Take for example gender equality. What is gender equality? Man is dominating woman, woman is feeling pain. So let's create a system where women don't feel the pain. That's what consciousness. Consciousness ultimately is pleasure pain. 
So what is gender equality? Minimization of pain. What is communalism? Sorry, what is communism from each according to his capacity to take according to the need? Very, very high ideal. But what is that about? About feelings. What is democracy? Many people are suffering. They should not suffer. It is about feelings. So do you see all ideological systems, religions are pain minimization systems. So culture is essentially pain minimization plus pleasure maximization. So towards pleasure maximization and pain minimization, cortex is being used. Which means we did not create these ideologies, world wars, civilization, progress, simply through reasoning. We created them through feelings and reason working in favor of those feelings. Feelings being maximization of pleasure and minimization of pain. So, whatever we achieved, we achieved it through group effort, through surplus, through accumulation process, technology. So the present day man's progress is contributed by a man 10,000 plus years ago who invented domestication. It is like that. Apes are not capable of doing that. So we did not achieve all these things through reasoning. We achieved them through unity, through conflict, through groupism, us versus them. Okay. And all these things are made possible through feelings. So reason in the service of consciousness is what produced this civilization and not reason alone. I see because the role of feelings is not understood. I see somebody saying, okay, as we discussed, narrow intelligence to general intelligence and then one day consciousness. And somewhere he says, uh, computers will start reading books and they can read so many books that the centuries of wisdom or knowledge computer will grasp. How? How can computer read anything and understand? Impossible. Computer can read a telephone directory, memorize all the numbers, may use phone to call everybody, but it cannot understand an LKG story because to understand feelings are needed, computer doesn't have. So the idea that the computer will read all the books of social sciences and that this and one day it will be intelligent doesn't make sense. Okay. And also, so, so consciousness, so intelligence not backed by consciousness has huge limitations. And also when it comes to decision making, Damasio showed that the way humans make the nation, he says, are not based solely on reason. He says, on reason, we explore alternatives. Alternatives. Alternative one, alternative two, alternative three, like this, through reason, cortex activity. But finally, when a choice is made, it is through emotions or feelings. And computer doesn't have the support system. It can generate alternatives, but it does not know how to fix. Humans think they will set certain criteria. Okay. 
within that criteria it will function but how is it different from man working and computer working so for example how to reduce hunger computer may think eliminate some people and hunger will be reduced but man will think no that is not what he meant which means the man solving a problem he may have unlimited number of assumptions in solving a problem he knows what is not intended what is not what is intended in man solving a problem there are unlimited assumptions in computer solving a problem there are limited assumptions and it cannot maneuver which is not an assumption which is assumed so if you think that even small decision making is made on the basis of emotions you will not think computer can decide the way human beings can decide in fact some people are proposing let computers be involved in legal practice let computers judge because after all computers won't discriminate on the basis of gender and so on and so whereas man is discriminating so completely wrong computer may not discriminate but computer doesn't have the feelings to find out what the issue is okay so my point is we formed our image on the basis of other animals so we formed our image on the basis of in comparison uh i mean we fixed our image to cortex but that is not true cortex working in the service of consciousness is what made this possible okay so now much more intelligent machines are coming so what should we do is an issue but before we go into what we should do to uh, handle in uh, an artificial intelligence maybe we need to have a review of what we have done so far regarding technology so we will review that in a minute before working out man versus artificial intelligence okay let us see what has been the relationship of man versus technology so far technology so far because my point is that as of now man has a problem with the technology that he created and artificial intelligence is only going to somewhat add to the problem and nothing more than that okay what do i mean by this take for example industry revolution the most important thing i am giving a judgement i want you to think about it i believe that if we really made effective use of industrial revolution and technology we could have created much much better societies if only we knew how to handle pleasure pain i believe we use industrial revolution simply for gdp rise more luxuries more production if we focused on the creation of a different society for the same level of technology we could have created much better technologies much better societies that we need to present and second thing is that we created certain very very serious problems you clear correct this is the industrial civilization okay and next more serious climate change so 
So my point is GDP obsession through GDP obsession we missed creation of better society. That is one point. And we created two threats: nuclear and climate change. The difference between these two threats is that for nuclear weapons to destroy the civilization, you just need one or two lunatics to use those weapons and finish it off. Very much possible. That's possible. But the difference of climate change threat is that you don't need any lunatics here. If we just continue to do what we are doing now, this will finish off the civilization. Mankind has been. It is too clean. So, what do these three things say? This is about not making an effective use. This is creating a threat. Or at least we may survive this, but there is no, there doesn't seem to be good surviving in this. So what does all this mean? It means we are creating technology, but we are not sufficiently wise to make use of the technology. Why is it so? It seems to be like this. Technology keeps on adding, accumulate faster. Okay. The present day BSc student will know much more than Einstein. Anyway, technology keeps growing. Whereas wisdom grows but grows very little. I believe ideologies, democracy, modernization. I believe this is growth in wisdom. I don't think wisdom is on decline and ancient man was wiser, not like that. But what we can say is that growth in wisdom is not up to growth in technology. Because of which we are in a position where our very existence is under threat. So which means that this mismatch is a problem as of now. We don't need artificial intelligence. But what does artificial intelligence do? It acts to us. There is no doubt about it. So, it is important to address this issue of how do we evolve man and his institutions, political economic institutions in a way that can make effective use of the technology. That is an issue before artificial intelligence and that is an issue even after artificial intelligence. I don't think artificial intelligence will bring new things. And then more specifically, if you know the future possibilities of artificial intelligence but the immediate threat of climate change and possible threat from nuclear weapons. On balance, I think the, the, the most imminent threat to mankind is not artificial intelligence, but I believe simply human stupidity. Artificial intelligence is not going to overtake human stupidity in any near future in threatening mankind. So it is this issue of wisdom gap we should pursue. Thank you.